In this lesson, our topic is radiation quality and dosimetry. So, what is radiation quality? Well, it is a measurement of the damage potential of a particular type of radiation. This means that the different radiation types we have discussed, alphas, gammas, and positrons, for example, have differing abilities to cause damage to tissue. This damage potential is related to the radiation's size, charge, and energy. We have a good example of this with ammunition. Here is birdshot, the particular shotgun shell filling, and here are 303 caliber bullets. Now, one 303 caliber has nearly equal mass as the birdshot, but which has more damage potential? There is the obvious answer to this question, but we have proof as well. Remember in 2006, Vice President Cheney accidentally shot his friend while bird hunting. Although he was injured, he survived due to the small damage potential of birdshot, at least to a human. Let's take a look at some units that you should already know well. The electron volt is the energy gained by an electron which is accelerated through a field of one volt. Also, note that the electron volt can be converted to joules. Now, as we begin to look at radiation damage to tissue, let's first look at linear energy transfer, or LET. LET is the measure of energy that is absorbed by the material. Its units are keV per length, such as millimeters. This is somewhat related to the track, or path, that we discussed last time. Let's consider a beta particle moving through a material, such as a lead brick. It should be intuitive, but as it transits, it transfers energy to the material. A high LET means that the radiation transfers a large amount of energy to the material, but it will travel a short distance. This is because it runs out of energy quickly. A high LET also means that it has the ability to produce more damage. Of course, we are concerned with biological damage. As we begin to examine this damage more, we must first understand the units of measurement in radiation dosimetry. First is radioactivity. You already know this is the rate of decay or number of disintegrations per unit of time, usually seconds. For all our units, there is the traditional system and the SI system. The Curie is the traditional unit, and one Curie equals 3.7 times 10 to the 10th disintegrations per second. The SI unit is Becquerel's, and one Becquerel equals one disintegration per second. Further, one millicurie equals 37 megabecquerels. Next is exposure. This is basically defined as the electric charge in air due to the presence of radiation. Put another way, it is the total sum of the kinetic energy of the charged particles which are liberated by uncharged radiation. The traditional unit of exposure is the Rentgen. One Rentgen is equal to 2.58 times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs per kilogram. The unit is named after Wilhelm Rentgen, who was the discoverer of X-rays. The SI unit for exposure is the gray. One gray is equal to one joule per kilogram. Our next measurement is absorbed dose. It is similar to exposure except it considers the absorber type. Thus, it is the energy deposited in tissue. Note that the value of absorbed dose from the same radiation will change as the tissue type is changed. The traditional unit for absorbed dose is rad, and the SI unit is gray. The conversion between the units is 100 rad equals one gray. Note that the gray is used for exposure and absorbed dose, even though these are different measurements. The definition of a gray fits both measurements, but remember, the difference is the absorber type. 
Let's look closer at exposure and absorbed dose. Generally in dosimetry, we can consider one Rentgen to be equal to one Rad. However, in human tissue, about 87% of the energy of one Rentgen is absorbed. Therefore, the exact equivalent is 0.87 Rentgen is equal to one Rad. The next measurement is dose equivalent. This takes the absorbed dose and corrects it for the damage potential of the radiation type we are measuring. In order to do this, we must provide a weight factor for the different types of radiation. The weight factor is QF or RBE. QF is quality factor, while RBE is relative biological effectiveness. While RBE is the newer term, many sources still use QF. They are essentially interchangeable. As mentioned, these factors give numerical values to the damage potential of the radiation type. To find the QF or RBE, we take the dose from a standard radiation that produces a given biological effect and divide by the dose from a test radiation that produces the same biological effect. The standard radiation used is generally 200 kVp x-rays. The units of dose equivalent are rem for the traditional unit and the SI unit is sievert. The conversion is 100 rem equals 1 sievert. In order to calculate the dose equivalent, we take the absorbed dose times the quality factor or RBE. To simplify the determination of dose equivalent, the ICRP has defined values for QF or RBE, which are accepted to use in nearly all dosimetry applications. Here are those QF values published by the ICRP. Note the increased RBE as the radiation size increases. This table shows the QF and the LET. As intuition should tell, the QF increases as the LET increases. When calculating dose equivalent, all radiations must be included. For example, if there is a gamma radiation and an alpha radiation, we must consider the dose equivalent for each in the total dose equivalent. To calculate for this example, we take each absorbed dose and multiply by the RBE to get the dose equivalent for that radiation. Then, we add these values to get the total dose equivalent. In this case, 1,650 rem, which is equal to 16.5 sieverts. When dealing with a QF of one, you have probably heard the generalization that one rentgen equals one rad equals one rem. While this is an acceptable estimation, the reality is that it is 0.87 Rentgen for 1 Rad, and 1 Rad is about 0.96 Rem. It should also be noted that there is no universally accepted conversion from Rad to Rem. Let's quickly review. Exposure measures the radiation effect in air. Absorbed dose measures the radiation effect in a specific type of material, and dose equivalent measures the radiation effect of a specific radiation type. There is yet another measurement of radiation effect on the body that we will now consider. And that measurement is the effective dose equivalent. This measures the biological risk on the whole body by considering that different tissue types respond differently to radiation exposure. It also accounts for radiation to only part of the body versus uniform radiation to the entire body. In order to account for the different tissue responses, weight factors are used. These weight factors for tissue response were determined and published by the ICRP. The most recent revision to the recommendations of the ICRP was in 2007. It groups the body into 14 designated tissues or organs, plus one more to include everything else. A weight factor is published for each of these 15 designations. To calculate the effective dose equivalent, we take the sum of the dose equivalent times the weight factor for each tissue or organ that receives radiation. 
the equation will often appear in this form where HT is the dose equivalent and WT is the tissue weight factor. Now, you may ask, how do we account for long-term dose to an organ, especially if it is inhaled, injected, or swallowed? The answer is the committed dose equivalent, or HT50. This is the dose equivalent to an organ or tissue during the 50 years following intake of the radioactive material. We use 50 because beyond that, there is not likely to be much increase, as the recipient has likely perished by then. The committed dose equivalent accounts for both physical decay and body excretion. The biological half-life is the same principle as radioactive or physical half-life, and it is how we account for the body excretion of the radioactive material. It is important to note that it is an approximation because the rate can differ from person to person in sickness versus health and when medications are given. The vast majority of biological clearance of radioactive material is via the renal system and the bowels. The overall disappearance of radioactive material from the body over time is described by the effect of half-life, which considers both physical and biological decay. Its calculation is 1 over the effective half-life equals 1 over the biological half-life plus 1 over the physical half-life. We have seen many ways to calculate dose now, considering many variables. It becomes even more complex when trying to calculate a specific dose to a specific organ. Consider this. Let's put a radioactive material into the lungs. The organ containing the material is the source organ. Suppose we want to know the dose to the liver, then the liver becomes our target organ. Now, the radioactive material remains in the lungs for some time, but biologically it is cleared via the liver, so eventually it moves there. Notice that now the liver is both the source and the target organ. To calculate a precise dose to the liver, we would have to know the answers to some questions. As you can imagine, these are nearly impossible to answer. Also in this example, we are only looking at the liver. Notice though that there are many organs receiving a dose from this source, and all of these doses must be considered in the overall biological effect to the whole body. This further complicates the calculation. Another factor we must consider in calculating dose to tissue is the percentage of radioactive emissions that deposit energy in the tissue versus those that escape the tissue. This value is called the absorbed fraction. Many factors that we have already discussed affect the absorbed fraction, such as track, density and thickness, radiation type, radiation energy, and half-life of the nuclide. Absorbed fraction will be expressed as a number between 0 and 1, where 1.0 equals 100% absorption. Now you may ask, with all these factors to consider, how can we ever calculate an accurate dose to an organ? The MIRD, or Medical Internal Radiation Dose Committee, which is a permanent committee of the Society of Nuclear Medicine, has provided a widely accepted method to calculate internal dose. The first factor in this calculation is accumulated activity. When we plot the radioactivity versus time on a graph, accumulated activity is the area under the curve. Its unit is activity times time, for example, microcurie hours. Here is the mathematical representation of accumulated activity. It is important to understand that cumulated activity is the first step in determining the dose to an organ that a patient receives from a nuclear medicine procedure. The second factor is called the S factor. It considers most of the physical aspects of the location of the radioactive material. Here is the equation for S factor. Notice it accounts for total energy of each radiation type, absorbed fraction, and the mass of the target organ. Here are just some of the complications associated with calculating the S-factor. First, 
the absorbed diffraction varies greatly with gamma rays, depending mostly on their energy. Also, all transitions, disintegrations, and emissions must be included, not just the primary decay. For technetium 99M, there are a total of 14 radiations that are included in its S factor. These include conversion electrons, fluorescent X-rays, and OJ electrons. Lucky for us, the MIRD published S factors, so we don't have to perform all these measurements and calculations. Here is an example of S factors for technetium 99M. Putting it all together now, the MIRD dose equation is simplified to cumulated activity times the S factor. Make sure you understand that cumulated activity considers the biological parameters and the S factor considers the physical parameters. Although we went quickly over all of the concepts here, there are some important ones. In review, you should understand LET and its effect on dose to the patient, all measurements of radioactive energy deposit and converting their units between SI and traditional, how to incorporate QF in dose calculations, how to calculate effective half-life, and how to calculate organ dose using the MIRD scheme. You should also be familiar with all the concepts associated with these.